Hello and welcome to the second video on the series on hyperpigmented lesions of retina. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to the lectures on insight ophthalmology. In the last video, we have studied about the drusens and all the types of drusens. And today we shall be studying about hard exudates. So what are hard exudates? Hard exudates are nothing but they are lipid deposits that are produced by the lipoprotein leakage from the blood vessels. So basically, whenever you see hard exudates, it means that the vessels in that region are uh, affected and those vessels are basically leaky. It is because of the leakage of that vessels that we are seeing hard exudate and therefore hard exudates are usually associated with various vasculopathic conditions. Okay, yeah. So now hard exudates are basically located more anteriorly when we compare them to the drusens. As in my previous video, I told you that the drusens are actually located uh, below the RP and in between the RP and the Brux membrane. However, the hard exudates are intraretinal. They are located within the layers of the retina and specifically within the outer layer of the retina. And to be more uh, specific, it is present in the outer plexiform layer of the retina. At this point, I would like to tell you that if you're not aware about the anatomy of retina, you can visit my video on the anatomy of retina uh, by the name of, on layers on retina. So, uh, so as you can see, this is the OCT which is representing the layers of the retina and this is the outer plexiform layer represented over here between the blue line and the green line. And this is the location where we find the hard exudates. So, the hard exudates basically appear hyper reflective on the OCT. That means they will look as more whitish lesions on the OCT like this in the outer plexiform layer and they, they tend to absorb light and therefore because of that we have this shadowing effect which is seen behind uh, the outer plexiform layer right. So what happens is over here we will have black shadows just behind the hyper reflective lesions present in the OPL and that is what is seen in hard exudates. So in the fundus uh, photograph uh, in the fundus photograph of uh, hard exudate these hard exudates will actually look like yellowish waxy appearance so they don't if we talk about drusens drusens are more of dull lesions whereas the hard exudates are more of waxy lesions wax like yellowish colored lesions and they usually have well-defined margins okay and uh, so what is important over here is waxy glistening appearance now these hard exudates can take a number of patterns sometimes they will be arranged in a ring form and that is called the circinate uh, maculopathy if they are present in the macula or they can be present in clumps that means a few hard exudates present together near a vessel which is leaking or they can actually be present in the form of a star and that is called systellate configuration. So depending upon what is the underlying cause for the presence of those hard exudates, the hard exudates can take a uh, form of all these patterns. However, when we talk about drusens, uh, drusens usually are randomly spread except the familial drusens which are having this honeycomb appearance or the radial appearance. Remaining drusens are mostly randomly spread in the retina. So always whenever we see uh, hard exudates, usually the signs of underlying condition will also be present and that condition will indicate leakage. So basically I told you that whenever there is a leakage from the vessel that will lead to hard exudates and uh, there will always be accompanying signs present in the fundus along with the hard exudate which will tell you what is the cause of this leakage. For example, when the patient has diabetic retinopathy, there will be microaneurysms present. And when the patient has Coats disease, there will be vessel uh, dilatations and telangiectasias. So let us see all this with examples. So before that, what is the mechanism? As I told you, increased vascular permeability will allow the leakage of the fluid and the lipoproteins into the retina. Because of which what we have is thickening of the macula, which is also called macular edema. Now, after some time, this water, this leakage will get reabsorbed and uh, some of the lipoproteins will get precipitated, okay, within the outer plexiform layer and that precipitation is nothing but the hard exudates. 
So first let us talk about the Circinid exudates that is the ring shaped exudates and why where do we see this ring shape of or the ring pattern of the exudates. So usually whenever the Circinid exudates are present it indicates a chronic leakage from the capillaries and usually it is present in and around the macula. So the conditions where we see this is diabetic maculopathy, branched retinal vein occlusion also called the BRVO retinal artery macroaneurysm, radiation retinopathy and retinal telangiectasia. Now the first three conditions are more common compared to the fourth and the fifth one. The first one is diabetic retinopathy. So all, always there will be some accompanying signs which will be present along with the heart exudates. So you can see over here there are multiple microaneurysms which are present over here and there are certain dot blot hemorrhages as well which tell you that there is diabetic retinopathy and along with that you can see this so these hard exudates you can see they are actually arranged in the form of these rings and uh, as you can see So these hard exudates are actually arranged in the form of rings. So you can see all these are clumped together. These are hard exudates and they are all present in the outer plexiform layer. And because there are presence of microaneurysms and uh, the certain hemorrhages present here, we can say that it is actually the diabetic retinopathy. Similarly, here also you can see typically the macula is involved. Again, you can see certain microaneurysms here and there. And uh, there are other changes of the diabetes like over here is a blood hemorrhage probably. And here is actually the ringed appearance or the circinate maculopathy in which the hard exudates are clumped together. And this indicates chronic leakage from this vessel and we can also call it as CSME that is clinically significant macular edema. Now coming to branched retinal vein occlusion. So in branched retinal vein occlusion also you can have hard exudates present in the form of a ring structure. Now this can be a complete circinate ring or it can be just an incomplete circinate ring which is not very clear in this picture however because this is incomplete. Over here as you can see this is the layers of this is the ring of the hard exudates present in the macula. Those hard exudates are actually blocked over here because of the presence of hemorrhages. So uh, how do you actually recognize the branched retinal vein occlusion there will be sectoral distribution so here is the actually the inferior arcade is involved and therefore you can see only the sectoral distribution of the exudates and the hemorrhages they are all present inferiorly so this is inferior branched retinal vein inferior temporal branched retinal vein occlusion and you can see this are hard exudates which are present in the macula which indicates that there is a macular thickening and there is actually macular edema in this case similarly retinal artery macroaneurysms they will also uh, present as circinate uh, hard x-rays so you can see over here is the macroaneurysm and usually surrounding that macroaneurysm will be the ringed clusters of the hard x-ray because it is the macroaneurysm which is actually leaking and causing this exudation of the hard exudate. So what happens is that the fluid will leak from here but later on the fluid will get uh, resorbed by the retina and what is left behind is the precipitation of the lipoproteins which will be seen as this glistening structures which are hard exudates. Similarly we have a condition which is idiopathic juxtafoveal telangiectasias which is also called MACTEL and specifically MACTEL type 1 which is going to present uh, as a circinate maculopathy. So how do you see the other signs which are present in MACTEL? So you will see telangiectasias near the macular area that means dilated vessels and specifically it is the second uh, order arterioles which you can see they will be dilated and what is more important is the right, sh uh, the right angle bend of these vessels. So if you see a vessel like this the capillary will be bending straight into the macula at a right angle from this and that usually indicates that this is a MACTIL, that is macular telangiectasia, and surrounding that you are going to see uh, this lots of exudation in a ring pattern. Similarly, over here you can see in this picture, you can see various vessels which are actually going inside the macular area where it's supposed to be the vascular zone. And over there, there are you can see this is the artery and the right 
angled vessel which is going towards the macula and uh, along with that there is a grayish discoloration of the macula area which is also a very important diagnostic feature of the MACTEL and specifically it is the MACTEL type 1 which is associated with the circinate uh, hard exudate pattern. Next pattern is the stellate pattern that is the star shaped pattern. So here the hard exudates are actually located in the form of a star. So they are all radiating from the macula. This is called the stellate pattern. So the stellate pattern again can be a complete stellate or an incomplete stellate. So when you have a full circle that's called a complete and when you have only half star that is called an incomplete stellate pattern. Now there are two conditions which can present very similarly and uh, they present with this stellate pattern. So the first condition which is more common is actually hypertension and to be more specific it is malignant hypertension or sometimes in any condition which can lead to hypertension like patients who have chronic kidney disease in which uh, there can be renal hypertension they can also present with this macular star formation right and along with that sometimes you can have the uh, hypertension malignant hypertension in which you are going to see this uh, uh, swelling of the optic disc and uh, so uh, that can present in hypertensive retinopathy however more specifically disc edema along with macular star is seen in a condition which is called neuroretinitis right so i have explained to you about neuroretinitis in my video on optic neuritis so be free feel free to visit that video and enhance your knowledge on optic neuritis and neuroretinitis so in neuroretinitis also we will see disc edema as you can see the disc margins are not very clear along with that you can see certain hard exudates radiating from the uh, uh, macula in the form of a star and this is called neuroretinitis so stellate configuration of hard exudate is c number one in hypertension and second is neuroretinitis now let us talk about the subretinal exudates so this hard exudates as i told you they are mostly present in the outer plexiform layer Subretinal exudate means that it is a lipoproteinaceous material which is actually present below the neurosensory retina and in between the neurosensory retina and the RPE. So we know that the layer, the retina is uh, divided into basically two parts. One is the RPE, which is the outermost part, and then we have the neurosensory retina, which is the inner part, which in turn has the nine layers of the retina. So in between them, there's a space which is called the subretinal space, and in that space if you have the collection of the exudates it is called subretinal exudates now since the space is quite huge the exudation also will be quite huge and usually this exudation is seen in case of Coats disease so in Coats disease uh, which is seen in boys mostly it is unilateral condition and it is a leading cause of white reflex of the pupil which is called leukocoria and a close differential diagnosis of retinoblastoma now in Coats disease, in Coats disease, what happens is we have subretinal exudation. So if you uh, see these exudates, these are actually quite deeper compared to the hard exudates that we see in the uh, diabetic retinopathy or other conditions. And along with that, uh, there will be other telltale signs of the Coats disease, like telling ectasias. There will be uh, bulb-like microaneurysms, which you'll see on FFA, and sometimes things like this, which is a uh, gliotic nodule that will be seen so what happens is subretinal exudates will uh, start getting organized in the subretinal space and they will undergo gliosis or fibrosis and they will form a gliotic nodule subretinally like this seen in Coats disease similarly over here you can see the vessels which are passing over here and it's a large area whitish area you can see and uh, it's not very well defined but since the vessels are passing over it and it is quite deeper and along with that there are other uh, telangiectasis vessels which are seen here so this is again Coats disease with the gliot gliosis similarly over here this is more clear picture so this entire uh, yellowish whitish area is nothing but they are exudates and in that you can see this reddish color vessels which are going and they are actually dilated and telling ectatus vessels and you can see certain bead like formation here which are called the bulb like aneurysms and if you do an FFA they are called they look like bulbs 
on uh, FFA and they are very diagnostic of the Coats disease. So a picture like this with huge massive exudation is actually Coats disease and it is subretinal exudates. This exudation can reach uh, to such an extent that it can actually cause detachment of that neurosensory retina from the retinal pigment epithelium and can lead to a retinal detachment. And since this retinal detachment is occurring because of exudation, it is called exudative retinal detachment. Now, another condition where we can see subretinal exudation is the retinal capillary hemangioma, particularly associated with a VHL disease that is a von Hippel-Lindau disease. Patients with von Hippel-Lindau disease will usually have bilateral uh, hemangiomas of the capillary of the retina and usually there will be rec recurrent lesions and sometimes multiple lesions will also be present. So you can see over here there is a pinkish lesion, pinkish reddish color lesion and you can see this dilated feeder vessel which is going towards it, right? So this is the retinal capillary hemangioma and surrounding that you can see this yellowish exudation. So surrounding exudation will basically indicate that it is this lesion of the vessel which is leaking and because of that chronic leakage there is collection of this lipoproteinaceous material which is nothing but the exudates okay and this exudate is also subretinal so how do you see hard exudates on OCT? On OCT, as I told you, it is the outer plexiform layer. We are going to see this uh, hard exudates and they are going to absorb all the light and they are going to cause this shadowing effect. You can see over here, here the layers of retina are visible, whereas behind the area of the hard exudate, you are not able to see the uh, uh, layers of the retina because of the shadowing effect. And usually hard exudates are associated with the fluid and therefore that fluid will look this hyporeflective area on the OCT. So this is what I was talking about, the shadowing effect. So these are the clumps of hard exudate and you can see this two uh, hyporeflective bands. These are the shadows. Similarly over here, this is the hard exudates with the shadowing effect. Now, how do you differentiate hard exudates? Sometimes it's very difficult to differentiate hard exudates from drusen just by looking at the retina. So in those cases, your OCT might be helpful. This is very clear from the OCT that this lesion is present in the outer plexiform layer with the shattering effect. However, over here, it is the hyperreflective RP and you can see this lump bump appearance on the RPE as I told you in my previous video on the hyperpigmented lesions which was on drusens. So OCT can help you in differentiating between exudates and drusens very easily. So this was all about the hard exudates and subretinal exudates. In my next video, I shall be talking about the soft exudates, which is a misnomer and the cotton wool spots. So that's all for today. I hope it was useful. Thank you and have a nice day.